Welcome back, lesson seven, year 10 physics. In today's lesson, we're going to be learning about two components you probably haven't met before. They're called the thermistor and LDR. LDR, LDR stands for light dependent resistor. Let's just, let's just see where that fits in with the specification so <clears throat> you can see we've almost completed this booklet we've got two lessons left including today's lesson and <clears throat> part g of the specification which is lesson seven pages 41 to 44 which we're doing today Shows that today's learning objective is explain the design and use of circuits to explore the variation of resistance, including lamps, which we've learned about, diodes, which we've learned about, NTC thermistors, and LDRs. So I'll just highlight the part we're learning that's this year, <clears throat> including knowledge of how. Resistance varies with temperature for a thermistor and our resistance varies with the light intensity for an LDR. A multimeter could be used as an ohmmeter. We'll be doing that today, yes, to explore the variation of resistance in the thermistor and LDR. <coughs> Link to a statement D in the section. So D was when we learned about IV graphs, if you remember here, for the bulb or lamp, the fixed resistor, and for the diode. Today's lesson is relatively short. A straightforward lesson compared to lesson six. I'm sure you'll be glad to know. So let's get started. NTC thermistors. NTC, all NTC stands for, let's see look, is negative temperature coefficient. Now, really, that, that's a clue because it's telling us that. If you look at this graph here of a thermistor, as the temperature increases, so as you go this way on the graph, the temperature increases, and you go this way, the resistance decreases. So as you come this way down the graph, see, let's say from left to right, the temperature is increasing and the resistance is decreasing. So that's telling us that the higher the temperature, the lower the resistance, which is the opposite of what you get for a, a wire, a resistor, or a bulb. Hence, the wording negative temperature coefficient. In reality, thermistors will look like any of those. The symbol for a thermistor is almost exactly the same as that for a fixed resistor. But you notice that it has this mark through it or this that line through it so straightforward so think of a resistor and put those those two lines through it the way I, I often think about it in my mind is if we've got that as a fixed resistor I'll draw another two of those so the top one is the fixed resistor. There's, there's no reason for it being on a slant, by the way. A variable resistor is 
that and a thermistor is that. So bear that in mind, it might help you. Now, underneath is we have two pictures taken from the um, Room 39 Physics Laboratory and you can see we've used here a conical flask filled on the left hand side with water at 22 degrees Celsius and on the right hand side one was filled at 37 degrees Celsius and you can see that by putting the thermistor sorry the conical flask on the right hand side wasn't uh, filled with water at 37 I'm reading it again and you can see what's happened here instead is that the thermistor is being held by someone and body temperature is 37 so we're assuming that the temperature on the right hand side is 37 and on the left hand side here look the thermistor is in the water at 22. Now <clears throat> at 22 degrees Celsius we've got a reading there of 0 0.34 and the units for the thermistor would be you know, resistance is ohms and I think the setting is on kilo ohms, that's a thousand ohms. So similarly here, that's 0 0.25 kilo ohms. So as the temperature look is increasing from 22 to 37, the, the value of the resistance is decreasing from 0 0.34 to 0 0.25 kilo ohms. So the ohmmeter units in this experiment were kilo ohms. Now that, that's pretty much what you need to understand for thermistors. There's a, there's a question underneath which we'll come on to in a moment. Let's, let's just make sense of these two graphs. Graph A. I've already explained a few moments ago, it just shows that as the temperature increases, the resistance decreases. Graph B will, is showing something else. It's showing two lines for a high temperature and a low temperature. But look at the axes, that's voltage against current, which is what we've called V i graphs. So the first activity I want you to do is to look at this question here and I've, I've answered this for you but let's just look at the question first of all. Explain the overall pattern between resistance and temperature in an NTC thermistor and provide number values to back up this pattern. So the number values are these values highlighted in green for them. If this were in an exam, I'd always advise highlighting or underlining. So I, I've highlighted the most important words in the question, explain the pattern between resistance and temperature. So in yellow, I'll highlight this in yellow, I'm, ex as te I'm describing really here as temperature increases, the resistance of the thermistor decreases. The relationship is inversely proportional. R really, that's more of a, a description than an explanation. An explanation would give a scientific reason why it's happening. Now, and we don't need to go into, into that level of, of detail as to what's actually happening inside the thermistor in terms of how the electrons are moving. We don't need to do that. The second 
part of the question we'll highlight in green just as we highlighted in the question provide number of our lives so this can be evidenced from the ohmmeter photograph at 22 degrees Celsius the resistance is 0.34 kilo ohms and I want you to finish that off hence the red asterisk and you should be saying something similar to at 30 centigrade Celsius the resistance of the thermistor is 0.25 kilo ohms All right so you just finish off that answer there next question what happens to the current flowing through a NTC thermistor as temperature increases now to help you with that you can answer that yourself I'll go through this hint on the right hand side and I'll highlight it as, in, as I'm talking through we know that as temperature increases resistance decreases and we call that inversely proportional right? and that's why we've used this sim that symbol underneath inversely proportional we also know that i equals v over r in other words current equals voltage divided by resistance so if and in this case it is voltage is constant temperature is changing the voltage across the thermistor is constant we can show i is inversely proportional to r so if resistance decreases the current increases part, <laughs> part two question one then is asking you to write down what happens to the current as the temperature increases Off, often the best way to answer these questions is to look at what are the variables in the question it's asking you how does um, the temperature affect the current and if you don't know where to start just just pinch the word in out of the question in this case you can start off by saying as temperature increases always watch your spelling with temperature temperature as temperature increases the current I've written that down without really thinking about what comes next and what comes next is one of three things either the current increases decreases or stay the same well we we found out over on the right hand side here look as the temperature increases the resistance decreases and as the resist resistance decreases the current increases so in your answer get those full two marks talk about how the temperature affects resistance and resistance affects current before we go into question two i just wanted to look at a piece of software you've all got access to via the school website focus e-learning or focus on science here it is you can all access this and within uh, physics gcse let's look at you know la last lesson we looked at iv characteristics for resistor bulb and diode if we look at this one is looking at the temperature characteristics for a thermistor now i'll just go back to that screen there because i could see it couldn't quite fit on so if we just make sense of what's happening here you can see there's a thermistor in a beaker of water the temperature at the moment is 20 degrees but we should be able to plot points so i've just plotted a red point there 20 degrees the resistance is 4.82 kilo ohms and 
it allows us then to change the temperature to different settings. So if we want to change the temperature to, let's say, 25, let's just get that tab back on here. Okay, change a few things there. I've set that now to oh, just 30 degrees. So 30 degrees, we plot a point there. And you can see the temperature is decreasing. Could carry on with that. Put another few degrees on it. We get up to, what was that, 38. Plot the point. And you can see there's this characteristic curve that's appearing. Yeah. Okay, so it's just another way of showing the same experiment. And if we were to uh, join up those points with a curve of best fit, it would be similar to what's in your booklet. Back to the booklet, question two is asking from graph B, for any given voltage, which the mister has the largest current? So let's go back to graph B at the top here. We got a th we got two thermistors, one at high temperature, one at low temperature. Now the, what what it's saying there to use extraction lines. If we just use a ruler and make that perfectly vertical, and we draw in an extraction line here, what that shows us is that at a lower temperature, if we were to go across this way, then that current there would be smaller than that current there. So in other words, the current flowing through the thermistor at a low temperature is lower now when it's at a high temperature because if you look at the graph on the right hand side here let's see here's a high temperature you've got a low you've got a lower resistance and therefore a higher current you can answer question two now then so to answer that you just write down which thermistor I want a high temperature or low temperature has the largest current. So you put one answer there, on which you've got the highest resistance. So you answer just there. And add extraction lines. So I've done that for you above. Make brief notes on th thermistors. You can go um, to do a bit of research on this online, look to see what, what applications they use for. Show the circuit symbol, and you could go a step further and explain how it works but certainly do most important one make sure you include applications uh, you, you, you find the main applications are uh, where you need something that's temperature controlled so an electric oven air conditioning um, it just central heating system where you, you need to have a constant temperature you can do some research on that. And the second part of the lesson then is very similar. It's for a light dependent resistor. If you understand how how thermistors work in that the resistance change with temperature, an LDR or light dependent resistor works on, by the same principle, but rather, rather than temperature change, it's light intensity that's changing. And the resistance change with light intensity rather than temperature. So let's just read what it says underneath. The resistance of an LDR depends on how much light or light intensity shines on it. One of the uses, so is it, they're giving you an application here, look. One of the uses is to switch street lamps on and off depending on light intensity. You want the street lamps to come on. Uh, at night time when it gets dark so there'll be a threshold of light intensity which will then have 
the right level of current to switch the street lamp on. The shape of the graph is very similar to a thermistor. The only difference here, look, we talk about light intensity rather than temperature. Um, and you can see the brighter the light, the lower the resistance. And exactly the same thing here underneath. We have an experiment where an LDR has been set up in bright light conditions and low light, so or dark light conditions. Uh, and you can see that's been done by the right hand side. The LDR exposed the natural light in a classroom. And well, that's Mr. Hancock. And Mr. Hancock's thumb has been used to make the conditions much darker. And you can see what's happened here is that the, the resistance has changed quite dramatically. In that, in the darker conditions, the resistance has increased. And that's what you'd expect from, from this graph, because if we were to label bright light conditions, that would be over here somewhere with a high light intensity and low light conditions would be over here with a high resistance. Just add to the side here, a multimeter is acting as an ohmmeter. Ohmmeter. Measuring resistance whose units are we, we, usually ohms, but in this case, we deal in with high resistance kilo ohms. Remember, a kilo is a thousand. A kilo ohm is a thousand ohms. Now, question one is very similar to the question one, which is what we we did previously. From graph C in the photograph of the LDR circuit, explain fully what happens to an LDR's resistance as light intensity increases. I've made a start there only for you. So as light intensity increases, the resistance of a LDR, and as a quick hint here as well, remember, ask yourself, what's the relationship between resistance and light intensity? So as light intensity, I could show that the other way around actually, like that. As light, that, that's what it's asking here. If we look at the question, as light intensity increases, as that goes up, resistance comes down. We then know that the relationship between current voltage and resistance is that. For a constant voltage, we can say that. That current is inversely proportional. Inversely proportional, meaning when one of the variables goes up, the other one comes down. So in this case, what we found out is that as light intensity goes up, resistance comes down. Therefore, the current goes up. So you'd answer that as light intensity increases, the resistance decreases. And therefore, the current flowing through the LDR would increase. But what is that, what's it actually asking for here? What happens to the resistance? So you haven't got to talk about this bit here. You've just got to talk about this here. Then from graph D, for any given voltage, which LDR has the largest current and the highest resistance? So again, I'm not going to go through all this. Use your extraction lines as we did previously. If you can't remember what to do, go back, pause, rewind the video, go back and find out. And question three, what does graph D tell us about an LDR's resistance if a light intensity is constant. Well, 
that's a bit more of a difficult one to understand. So if we just took one of these lines here, let's change. If we took one of these lines, that's at a constant light intensity. And because the gradient of the line is constant, the resistance is constant. Okay, so all you've got to do to answer question three there, what does graph D tell us about an LDR's resistance if the light intensity is constant? If the light intensity is constant, the resistance is constant. Okay, so that now is the end of lesson seven. Make sure you've obviously completed the start of an plenary assessment before doing this video and also that you do the assessment that goes alongside it on Moodle. Okay, bye for now, see you next time.